My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. One of the most beloved movie stars of his generation has written his first novel, a conversation custom made for our man in Hollywood, Ben Mankiewicz. Where are we right now? Uh, we are on, okay, we are on about as famous a back lot as you're going to get. They moved some Just another ho-hum day in Hollywood, a tour of Paramount Studios with Tom Hanks. It looks real. It's impossible to believe that uh, these aren't real. Take your hands and just block off the sky, you know, right. so it, you know. Right. And honestly, that's a city street. Today, he's revealing some show business truths. Once you're on the lot, you can walk around. You can go almost anywhere. I'm going to yeah. tell you something right yeah. now, and don't, don't put this on. Of course, keep it on. There are signs that are always around sound stages. As, this is a close set. Nonsense. <laughs> Anybody can walk onto any set anytime they want to. No one is going to say, hey, you, yeah. come back here. Hanks took me to Soundstage 25. It looms large in his history. Oh, my Lord, look at this. This is where Hanks taped Bosom Buddies with his co-star, Peter Scolari. The show ran just two seasons. Peter and I had the first two dressing rooms right next to the hair and makeup thing. Bosom Buddies going off the air was not, a, was not because you were going on to bigger and better things. Yet. No, no, we no. got fired. You got fired. Yeah, we got, we got fired. Since losing that gig, things have improved. He's now a two-time Best Actor Oscar winner, a producer, director, one of the two or three defining stars of his era. And 43 years after his first film, he knows the audience. Movies are this one-on-one -on -one relationship. Movies are made for one person and one person only, and that's the person that is, that is viewing. We all have our own memories that are connected to a specific film that if we think about it, we can remember where we were, what theater we saw it in, or maybe what weekend it was when we happened to see them on TV. It's like as personal as reading a book. Now, Hanks is combining the two with his first novel, Out This Week, the making of another major motion picture masterpiece. And action, Tom! When I was born, my mama named me Forrest Gump. It's the story of the process, often spectacularly messy, of bringing a movie from the page to the screen. I had never read a book that captured the movie-making experience as I experienced making a movie. Hanks's novel tells an epic story from actors and agents to teamsters and gaffers. I think anybody who works in an office or on a construction site, even just a supermarket, might think that the efforts that they put into their job are as far removed from what goes into the making of a motion picture. It's actually much the same. Who causes a problem? Who's got, who's got an interesting idea? Who can make things happen a little faster? The end result is just different because you get a movie at the end of it. Getting a movie completed well, says Hanks, means following the text, which is much more than merely the script. And by text, I don't mean not just your dialogue, but the entire movie. Because actors always get, are you going to be in here? Are you going to get a shot? Where's the camera going to be? What's the shot going to be? They'll do just behave, all right? And everybody else will, will make that happen because otherwise all your, all your performances end up looking something like this. You know, it's like, <laughs> dude, no one turns and looks that way at the horizon. No, 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 no. This is what I used to do. I'd go in the mirror and I'd say, oh, here's what I want to do with it. Here's what I want to do with this scene. I want to go like this. Here's what I want to do. <laughs> you know, oh my God, could something be more, more, more artificial? Than, no, but I tell that. you, I'm sitting here next to it. I'm like, it's pretty good. Not bad. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The novel is, of course, a work of fiction. But the stories are inspired by Hanks' experiences on roughly 100 movies, including an early hit, Splash, directed by Ron Howard. I was incredibly intimidated because I'd been on two years doing Booze and Buddies, in which our whole job was to be funny. Our whole job was to be flashy, say funny things in a funny way. Splash had two legendarily funny cast members, Eugene Levy and John Candy. Do you think we're going to steal the mermaid? <laughs> what are you going to do? Fold her in half and put her in a briefcase? 
I operated from a place of, here's what my job is, to be as funny as these guys. And it was not a great read through. And Ron Howard, my boss, came up to me and said, I know what you're trying to do. I know, I know what you're trying to do. And you can't. You can't do that, Tom. We won't have a movie. He literally said, we won't have a movie if you do that. And I thought I was going to get fired that movie. He said, your job is not to be as funny as John or Eugene. Your job is to love the girl. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and that, that penetrated. Like, you heard that. Oh, yeah. dear. Yeah. Um, it ended up being part of a, the first lesson in an ongoing uh, you know, <laughs> doctorate in understanding what the movie is, of knowing the text. The funny thing is, it delivered a million passengers over 40 years in the air. Everybody involved in a movie, from the director to production assistants, has a job. As an art form, it's entirely collaborative, a word that gets Hanks thinking about his old friend Nora Ephron, who wrote and directed Sleepless in Seattle. Aren't you going to read any of these? No, because this is not how it's done. I'd much rather just see somebody I like and get a feeling about them. I was cranky. Why were you cranky? Without realizing it, I was cranky because she was a woman writing for a man. Now, how often has that been the opposite, a man writing for a woman? It's, Thousands you know, it's millions right. of times. Eventually, I came around. The problem with this, Nora, is, <laughs> is that you're a chick and I'm a dude, and dudes don't think that way in these circumstances. And she says, well, how do men think in that circumstance then? I said, he wouldn't say that. He said, diddle be ba diddle di da ga da da ba da da And she said, well, let's put that in the movie then. <laughs> and that had never happened before. It happened in ways, but never as specific as this, because she and Delia literally took what I said and put it in the movie. And then afterwards, I said, I was, you know, that actually worked out great. She says, well, you wrote that. I said, no, I didn't write that. I just complained, <laughs> and you guys wrote it down. She says, that's what writing is. Down there was, there was Taxi, Laverne and Shirley, and Happy Days. And so what of motion pictures? Like, Does this novel mean we'll be seeing less of the, Tom Hanks, the, the movie star? Is there a scenario where you think, oh, I'm going to basically stop acting. I'm just going to write. No, dear God, no. There is an aspect of how long you can actually I think do it and be part of the cultural zeitgeist. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. Where you become too familiar or the countenance becomes so overbearing, but there is nothing that is more fun. Coming to work and putting on clothes and pretending to be somebody else for a living, um, that's, that's a blast.